Parts have arrived. We're about to put the tank, new tank, back in the Lincoln. Uh, tank itself was not hard to find. It was everything else that was hard to find. So let's start with the sending unit. So uh, we've repaired this one or cleaned it and I'm gonna run it, um, put it, if you haven't watched the video on the electrolysis, uh, we cleaned this thing with electrolysis, uh, the filler neck too, and I think we've saved both of them. Checked the sending unit with ohm meter, it works, the tube's good, it's free, I cleared that out. So I see no reason why we can't reuse this one. Uh, on that same subject, well, with a new filter screen. So let me go over this real quick. I, I'll put a part number to, in the description for this. I think it was off of like a F-150 or something like that, uh, the same era. And then the sending unit itself, if you need one, you can get it. Uh, I found it on eBay. There's two listings I found on eBay. This, this car has a low fuel light. So if you look up on eBay, you will find two different sellers with a sending unit listed for this car. One of them says with low fuel light. Now, when you look at the picture of that sending unit, it does not look like this one. I reached out to that seller. He said his stuff shows that it should fit and that mine has like a bent, this bend right here, whereas his is straight. He said, well, and his looks longer. He said, well, maybe mine's bent. I don't think that's the case. I think he's got one listed that maybe he's got some stuff crossed in his parts listing. And I think it's probably like for Mark V or something like that, or Mark IV, whatever the error that was around when this Continental was around. I don't really follow the Mark series. Anyway, um, I think that's what that one probably fits. And uh, another seller's got one that looks like this but it says does not no no low fuel light and so when i reached out to him he you know he asked me you know how many wires are my sending unit and i told him two and he said that and i verified under the car there's only two there's not a third one that's not being used uh, there's only two wires and two terminals occupied on the wire on the car uh, he said you know in this era they they got a so backtrack a little bit older lincoln's what they had was a third a third terminal here and that was for the low fuel light he said what they started doing uh and what my case probably is is that it was all done in the gauge not in the sending unit so when the gauge got to empty it activated the low fuel light not when the sending unit got to empty that was what he said. So he said that the sending unit he has uh, should work with this and low fuel light. So if you needed to order one, that is the correct sending unit. It'll look like this. It's got a bend right here uh, and it's got two terminals. So that should get you what you need. Now I did all that research before I knew that this one was gonna be salvageable. Uh, now that we know this one's good, we're just gonna use it. I don't see any reason not to um, so we're going to use it. We're going to put the new filter on it. Uh, took a picture before I pulled the old one out and measured from here to where the end of the filter was and where this part of the filter was so I can get it just right. It may, it's got a spot where it bottoms out in there, but just in case that's different for this sending unit, we're going to, we're going to measure, um, the, vent um the top of the tank has a vent little plastic thing uh it was in good shape so we're reusing it uh the gasket was actually in pretty good shape but i decided to go ahead and order one what we've got is one i think it was from an f-150 of the same era or somewhere near there it looked the picture looked right and i mean it's a little bit narrower but i think this one's just widened out I think this one will fit just fine. 
So there's that. Um, I think this one just got stretched out on the tank. So, and then our filler neck gasket, this one's in rough shape and it's expensive. <laughs> I think it's like 60 something bucks. But what I found is one from a same era Mercury, I think if I remember right. And the inner and outer diameters are the same. The only difference being this one's got this extra little seal piece, which to me just makes it even better. So that looks like that'll work. Um, this one is just stretched out. What's happened with both of these is you can see they're full of rust is, you know, this lip of this tank is not that wide. It's not any wider than this. And I assume the top is probably about like that. But what's happened, and you can tell by looking at the gaskets, is the tank has rusted and it's, you know, rust expands things. Rust doesn't get smaller, rust gets bigger. And so, yeah, that's what you end up with is, you know, it expands plus, you know, rubber's flexible. So, you know, it'll flex a little bit and this one's hard as a rock. So, well, it's not hard as a rock, but it, anyway, I think all these pieces of work, they're not listed for this car. I can get this listed for this car, but it was definitely more expensive than this one. Uh, the one I picked up for an F-150. There's your vapor seal part number if you want it. Um, I'll try to put links or I'm gonna try to put part numbers because links sometimes expire. So I'll try to put part numbers to this, this, uh, if there's a part number for this, I'll put a part number for that in case you need it. Um, and then this as well, like I said, I haven't gotten these on, but I'll give you all an update. Uh, what came with the tank is a new these for those fall for all this stuff falls let's just put it back in the box is a new ring and gasket so that'll pair with our sending unit uh i'm gonna put all this stuff on we're gonna put the vent on uh the the hose for the vent the sending unit of course this before we put the sending unit on this all that's going to go on the tank before we slide the tank in. Once we get the tank in place, then we will feed the filler neck in um, as the last step and guide that one in and uh, we should be good to go. All right, tank is ready to go in. So for the sending unit, it's got two little tabs that lock it into the tank. Uh, they're offset to the top and I had to bend those out just a little bit. Just check your fitment on those when you go in, make sure they're engaging, because what that'll do, not only does it line it up, but it keeps it from turning when you're knocking your lock ring on. It keeps, you know, and then I put a little bit of lube on the, I'm using transmission assembly goo is what I'm using. It's the blue stuff, the slightly tacky stuff. It's like a grease, wheel bearing grease consistency, but a little more slippery I don't, I don't know how to explain it but that's what i use use whatever you feel is appropriate um put that on the the little rubber o-ring or straight cut ring square ring whatever you want to call it um put that on there and then put some on the face of the sending unit and then some on the lock ring itself so when it's turning it's got some slipperiness to it and it's not trying to grab and twist the sending unit and then i put three little dots overkill just lining up with these three tabs just to make sure the thing didn't rotate overkill i know but yeah so sending units in uh put the uh filter sock on I'll show you all that in a minute uh same thing here just some blue Transmission assembly goo, and that worked well. We've got it pointing in the correct de correct place. I need to go get some fuel line for that. Um, I didn't have any small enough, 
So I'm gonna have to go get that and then we'll uh, put that on and give ourselves some extra. And then we can trim it off as needed once the tank's in. Uh, same thing here, blue transmission assembly goo and that went on just fine. And I'll show you all inside and you can see the sending unit. Right, turn the light on. So y'all can see down in here, there's our sending unit. And you can see it is right on the bottom. It's hard to get it to focus. Come on. There we go. It's right on the bottom. <laughs> So that worked out perfect. And yeah, like I said, ooh, zoom y'all out. Back it up. One other thing, the two little clips transferred off the old tank. They just hold that vent line in place. And I think that's it. There's nothing else on the old tank we need. And this thing was Swiss cheese. There's so many holes in it. So, and it weighs about, it weighs two or three times more than what that one does. And it's not that that one's made thinner. It's that this thing has so much varnish gas stuck in it. It's made it extremely heavy. I'll show you all the inside of it. Might as well. Is my light still on? Yes, it is. It's just... Hello? Anybody home? Look at all those holes. All right. Give me one last look. So many holes. All those little light spots like that, that's holes. Anyway. Old tank out, new tank in. And I did do some measuring and comparing. They're identical, so I always make sure to do that. Last thing I'm gonna do is get one that looks similar, but maybe is a couple inches different in dimensions and the thing doesn't fit once you get it up under the car. So do all that before you try fitting it. Hello, little guy there. All right, tank is ready to go in. I've got my quarter inch fuel line laid out, put a little spring clamp, spring tension clamp on the top. It didn't have a clamp on it before, but just put one on it because that makes me feel better. Give a special shout out to my Canadian viewers. Thanks for tank. I'm sure it's good quality. Seems like it. I'd rather get one from Canada than probably about anywhere else. So, should be good quality tank. So I'm not gonna set up camera, it's cramped under there. There's not much lighting. I'm just gonna go try to slip this thing in there. Flushed through the fuel line and the return fuel line um, with some brake cleaner and then some carb cleaner. So they should be cleanish, but we're gonna run a filter at the pump or before the pump on the feed line and i may even put one at the fuel tank on the return line so we're filtering the return line at least for a little while so i think we're going to put a filter there at least temporarily until we make sure we've got it all clear and then we can remove both of those later on down the line i'll cut my lines long enough that once i remove those fuel filters I can just plug them straight straight in so that's kind of my thought i think that's a good idea and so that's what we're gonna do let's get let me get this thing in and i'll bring y'all back well it was quite the acrobatic feat wish i could have shown y'all um <laughs> it was quite fun uh, luckily this tank's lightweight uh, you know, the, getting the old one out, I used the jack and just kind of let it fall. I didn't care if I, <laughs> I was just kicking it and whatever to get it out because the old one, I didn't care anything about it. It had holes in it and I got it out. But this one, um, you know, we went gingerly with it and ended up 
putting that side, the side with the filler, filler neck up first because that little kick out in the frame right there was hitting the lip on the tank if I tried to put the other end up first. So I just guided my vent line over the frame and luckily I got extra in that little thing on the end which is plugging the hose. Actually worked kind of nice to weight it down to kind of keep it, keep the slack pulled out of it as I went up with it. But I uh, started up at this end and kind of held it up while I rested this side up against the exhaust it was hitting. And so while I was holding it up against the exhaust, hold the tank with my left hand, I took my right hand and with this long pry bar, got on the exhaust and pried it out of the way and pushed the tank up in there. Once I got it up in there, I uh, hooked the straps on. I had already loosened off on the bolts and got that strap in. Then I had to loosen this one off just a little bit more and got it in. So uh, still got to cut my fuel lines. That little piece of one is just one I had on there to flush the lines, to help flush the lines. So we'll cut a little piece to go from here to here. And then I'll cut a piece from here to here. And then I'll also have a, a filter on this piece. So that's kind of the goal. But it's in. I just got to tighten these down. So I'm going to tighten those down real quick and uh, there's our sending unit wire installed. That's a good feeling. Look how nice that went. And that grommet from the Mercury or whatever worked perfect. You can see my, I just, once I got this thing started in there, I didn't want it once I got it close to the tank I slathered the uh, <laughs> transmission assembly lube all over the filler neck I didn't want it to bump in and get dirt on it on its way in of course it, it's got to pass through that I did not replace that um, I didn't see any need of it I'm gonna spread it down some rust killer and then the little gasket that goes in here I did not replace that either I think they were they were in a good enough shape and they're really not I'm not going to say they're not super critical but they're really not um, it's not it doesn't have any effect and it's to keep stuff out of this area really not out of the tank you know there's no seal there for the tank and there's our I'm gonna get a new gas cap. This one's got a little bit of rust. I tried to clean it up a little bit, but it just can't get in there real well. So we're gonna get a new gas cap. But for now, it'll plug a hole. All right, we're all hooked up. Um, put some spring clamps on there. I'll probably change those out. Not that I'm against spring clamps. I'm just not crazy about these spring clamps. They're just an assortment box I bought off of Amazon, and they're not the springiest. But we've got our hoses hooked up. Ultimately, decided not to do the uh, return fuel filter. I went ahead and just hooked another hose up on the other end and sprayed a whole can of carb cleaner through that hose and out through, you know, had this hose off right here and out here, and then blew it out with a, a compress you know with air compressor so i feel like that that one's really clean so we're not going to worry about that and i had cleaned this one out too i just did this one twice and i put a pre-filter before the pump to catch anything that could still be in this line uh, i think there'd be more crap in here than there was in here anyway going to the front of the engine this is what we've got we've got a that filter going before the pump and then we've got our return line uh, those spring clamps right there probably end up replacing and then there's one on the filter um, and this line it looks long that's because it's the correct length to not run a filter there so the goal is we're going to run a filter for a little bit and then we're going to take that out and not run a filter right there there's a filter on the carburetor and that's what we'll use um, because we've got a new tank and everything we shouldn't have any issues with 
uh, rust or anything like that but I wanted to run it just for a little while so we'll get a good bit of run time with the filter there and make sure that line's all good and then we'll take it out there's our vent line this spring clamp will stay I have no issues with running one of these on a vent like I said they're probably fine that's just me being paranoid I have a tendency on anything fuel to be paranoid and I think that's an okay thing I'd rather be overly cautious than careless so uh, but the vent no issue I don't know spring clamp should be fun it's running off the tank first time Fill filter down there. Well, our sending unit may not be working. I've got about, well, probably about 13 gallons in this thing. Uh, we get the car moving around a little bit and look what happened. Maybe that sending unit just needed to <laughs> move around a little bit, but it's it seems to be working now. Cool. Maybe it was stuck. Yeah, and the fuel light went out too. I gotta see why the brake light's staying on. Cut the engine off so y'all can hear me a little better. But uh, I think that's gonna do it for now. Uh, we've got a couple more things to check out on this car. Uh, we've gotta fix this awful exhaust leak. It's so loud. But uh, we'll get into that probably in the next video. But thanks for watching. Leave a comment down below, hit the like button, and subscribe for more.